So there's the DSC Impasa that we're gonna we're gonna make do automatic texting on the Raspberry Pi. I've already done it, but that's what the final installation looks like. I'm getting ready to tell you all about it, but I wanted to say thanks. I got a couple of family members and friends. Uh, uh, that are engineers that helped me do this. I am a regular mouth breather, knuckle dragger. Don't know hardly anything about programming. I've had a few Raspberry Pi projects, but it's still pretty foreign to me, especially just trying to type in Python. And to be honest, I haven't had the interest uh, or spent enough time trying to sit down and go through that. But I'm pretty good at monkey see, monkey do. I can look at somebody else's code that they've generated and eventually muddle through and see what they did and what it's supposed to be doing. Then of course it's a battle of which version of Python, again for maybe this is common sense for all you, if any of you programmers are listening, but to me it wasn't because I'm new to all this. Some of the stuff doesn't work with certain versions of Python or certain, you know, the Raspbian system, whatever. I had Raspbian on this Pi. I already had type VNC server put on it so that I could talk to it via my phone, look at its desktop for the Christmas lights project. So that was all set up beforehand. So I didn't want to change anything because I already had that done. So I went through and modified the code that I found, which I reference in the doobly-doo in the description of where I saw somebody else do this Pi project with a door sensor alarm triggering mechanism. So this is modified from that. Uh, to automatically send a text because the Pi generates an email, sends it to an email account. That email account behind the scenes generates a text message both to one phone for us, which uses Straight Talks network, and the other phone uses Google Fi. So you'll see those in the, in the code, um, or you're wondering what those are when you see them, that's why. But you can look, look up online what your individual provider does for that email to text conversion and put in the appropriate address there in the credentials file part of the uh, system here. But that's it. Thanks to those that helped because I am terrible at programming. I have no experience at it and needed help. And thank you to the gentleman that did the original code for the door sensor because that definitely got the ball rolling and uh, got things started. All right. Here goes the rest of the video. I didn't do anything. No change in the meter, so that's not right for the output pin. Oh, now we're going to check it out. Actually trip the alarm and see if the voltage goes up. <laughs> Yeah, it didn't. Uh oh. <laughs> it gonna be loud. I don't know how long you got. <sighs> it's gonna make my ears bleed. I know it. Uh -uh. Well, 
Oh, it's getting serious. Oh, it does go to 12 volts. Hey, it works. Oh God, oh God, oh God, here we go. So after the circuit, you get 0 0.01 volt or how, and if you trip the alarm, I'm gonna do this quick because I don't want the neighbors getting irritated. It's gonna take a while. Might as well get ready to disarm it. And open up that nice hole so that the sound can be even louder in my ear. Mm. Oh, there it goes, getting angry. Get ready. Three point oh seven. All right. So next, this is the <laughs> twelve volts that goes through the voltage divider, which is all smushed in here to get the three volts the pie needs. But I still want to be able to have push button for testing it so I don't have to actually sound the siren on the alarm to make sure the texting is still functioning. So I'm going to leave this in there. So how am I going to do that? Well this goes from the 3 volts on the Pi's board over to the inputs where it used to go which is where it's still going to go but obviously I still need the 3 volt positive over here going to that pin on the board. So this will go to the ground on the Pi and I gotta splice the switchy switch or this signal onto the one leg of the switch that'll go to the pie board too, sorry, so that uh, either one can trigger it. If it gets three volts, it sends the texts. Or if you press the button, it sends the text by getting three volts from the pie itself onto the signal pin. Boop, get to soldering. Oops, genius. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> that never happened. Whoop. Kind of hard to one hand this, but I kind of wanted to show. Uh. Okay. Just about a winter chicken dinner. All right, then there'll just be a power cord that plugs its USB power in over there. Boop. Okay. So that's how it's gonna look all in place. And just to test it, I'm going to go on the phone. Get the VNC viewer going. Double click the alarm icon. That is ready. Alright, back out of that if you want to. And then this is my simulated alarm without actually sounding the real alarm. If I press it and release it, 
that should have triggered it. And that's how long it took. There's my alarm to show, my text to show that the alarm was activated and that the alarm was deactivated because I pressed the switch and released the switch. If this alarm system, the Impasa, actually triggers, it will stay triggered until you deactivate it by entering the uh, user code over there on the keypad. So that's the next test. See if that works. Anywho, on the phone though, as you're looking at your program, you go to keyboard, control C to get out of it. And that kills it if you want to. No, it probably is just sitting there not monitoring. But anyway, that's how it works. Next up is to trigger the actual alarm alarm. <laughs> all right. I'm going to try to film all this as it's happening. So the Raspberry Pi is sitting there monitoring with the program, listening for that three volts that this will put out if it actually triggers an alarm. Well, it's in exit delay. I don't know how long it takes. I forgot what it's programmed for, but whatever it is, as soon as that thing goes into alarm mode, then I will trigger it and we'll see how long it takes to get a text. I need three hands. So I'm gonna leave the phone. I'll try to go trip the alarm and be able to see what the pie is doing at the same time. So I set that down, you know, go over here and pretend like the door got opened. And it starts, it starts giving you a, you better type the key in. This should be doing nothing. It's not yet. Hopefully, this will start making a meaner sound in a minute when it says you've had enough time to get over here and type disarm code in. All right, there goes the tone of upset. So let's see what it does when the alarm goes off here. Oh, there goes the alarm. It shows it's triggered. Perfect. I'm going to come over here. And I just disabled the alarm with the code. It shows disabled. And there are the two texts. I chose to put on there, you know, your local police phone number is. So if you wanted to go to the message, it, you, then you can just press the phone number. And it'll go to your dialer and dial your, you know, you don't have to look it up kind of thing. There you go. I think that's a winner winner chicken dinner. And same as always, to get out of this, you can just control C. Now it's just sitting there, but I would have of course left it on if I wanted to just leave it in monitoring mode. I'd call that a winner. That's what the final installation looks like. And you can still test it with that test button without actually tripping the alarm. All right, thanks for watching.